Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yesudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. In today's topic, we will discuss how we can predict the development of host inflammatory pigmentation in a person by examining their palmar creases. One of the first things I do when I examine anyone is look at their hands, particularly their palms. I look for hyperlinear palms, which I've discussed in a previous talk. However, there is another clinical feature that I found recently that may be very helpful in our clinical practice. It is based on an article published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology and it was published in April 2021. We first need to know what post-inflammatory pigmentation is. It's a reactive increase in pigmentation due to an overproduction or an irregular dispersion of melanin after cutaneous inflammation. Injuries, skin conditions like acne, eczema, psoriasis, and even cosmetic procedures can produce inflammation in the skin that can result in this increased pigmentation. The mechanism for this condition is not well understood, but an inherited predisposition has been proposed. After cutaneous stress, melanocytes respond variably with normal increased or decreased production of melanin that are unique and genetically predetermined, but not always related to Fitzpatrick Pathic skin phenotype. Thus, the clinical hyperpigmentation seen is based on an individual's melanocytic response following trauma or inflammation. Epidemiological research has shown that post-inflammatory pigmentation tends to occur more commonly among skin of color patients compared to Caucasian individuals. It is seen more frequently in Africans, Hispanics, Latinos, Asians, and those of Middle Eastern origin. It seems more common in those with mixed ethnicities as well. In the article that was quoted, the authors looked at the degree of post-inflammatory pigmentation following acne or photo damage and tried to establish a potential correlation with the pigmentation on the palmar creases. An important observation was that pigment found in the palmar creases did not always correlate with Fitzpatrick pathic skin type or even with eye color. In this study, they showed examples of a person with dark skin type 5 with light palmar creases and another patient with skin type 3 and green eyes who had dark palmar creases. Eight medical experts independently analyzed 126 images and found a correlation between palmar crease pigmentation and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. The author proposes that a palmar crease pigmentation scale may be used to differentiate between subjects with minimal risk to develop post-inflammatory pigmentation and those with an increased risk for to develop post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Subjects with a score of 0 or 1 with lighter palmar crease pigmentation would be classified as low risk, while those with a scale of 2 or 3 with darker skin creases could be classified as a higher risk of post-inflammatory pigmentation. So what is its clinical value? This classification can be used to adjust treatment protocols for skin procedures that may induce a strong inflammatory reaction in order to prevent post-treatment hyperpigmentation. These procedures include fractional or ablative lasers and other interventions such as chemical peels, microneedling and energy-based devices. In patients designated as low risk on the scale, these treatments can be spaced four to six weeks apart. Conversely, patients who are categorized by the crease pigmentation scale as high risk of developing post-inflammatory pigmentation, they should have the procedures with intervals of at least 20 weeks or five months between them in order to allow the skin to be fully re-epithelialized. There are limitations in the publication as it involved only eight doctors and only 128 images were reviewed. Even though it was blinded, there could be an element of bias. My own learning points from this study is that it can be a useful clinical tip to predict individuals who may be at a high risk of post-inflammatory pigmentation. We can use it to reassure those with fair skin that the acne scars and post-inflammatory pigmentation from other dermatoses may fade if they have minimal armor crease pigmentation. It will also help us identify those who will fare more badly with interventional procedures like lasers and peels as they may have darker palmar creases. Precautions may therefore be required for them, such as prolonging the intervals between their treatments. I hope you found this information as useful as I have. I plan to use the simple sign to help patients under my care. Thank you for listening and bye.